Today we're talking to Pavel from the Czech Republic. Now I'm old enough to remember Pavel, a country called Czechoslovakia. Um, yeah. So, so the Czech Republic is half of that, isn't it? Now it's. Uh, uh, yes, it's not exactly the half, but yeah, we are divided. <laughs> okay, and and you, you're kind of in Europe. You're south of Germany, south of Poland, Central Europe. Yeah, we are in the heart of the Europe. If it's yes. Yeah. And I actually checked before we came on online. So it's about 10.7 million, the population there now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to tell us about your 2020, Pavel? When did you first notice this, this disease? Oh, well, I noticed it uh, when it started in China. So I yeah. started my interest in, in, this, in this disease. And uh, the first cases uh, in Czech Republic were somewhere like in March. It started very slowly like first three cases and uh, I think it was the very beginning of March wasn't it yeah like yeah. for a second yeah in the beginning yeah 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 and then how did the authorities respond authorities respond uh, very quickly uh, there was kind of a funny situation that uh, some uh, let's say the men with the excel table uh, came uh, came to the ministry of interior and he was doing just some basic exponential fit to the data and he showed the government the data and of course nobody believed and said it's, it's completely crazy but the prime minister then uh, how the days came on he just checked the numbers and and the excel table and he found that there is a perfect match so very soon there was let's say complete lockdown and so we had in fact there was no first wave it was very very mild i think that was the 11th of march the government acted very quickly exactly yes so, so what was your day-to-day -day life like at the end of March? Were you completely uh, locked down? Yeah, completely locked down. Uh, people who uh, were together, let's say, they were doing the mask, uh, they were following all the rules. So everything was kind of perfect. The streets were, were free of people. The Prague was completely free. So uh, let's say crazy pictures of the city, which is usually uh, filled with tourists. Sure. Wow. So very effective lockdown and that completely stopped the first wave, basically. Basically, yes. Yeah. And then in, in, in the summer months, how were things? Were things were life more or less life more or less back to normal in summer? Yeah, uh, they uh, the government very quickly released most uh, most of the restrictions. There were no masks in June. People went uh, for vacation and so on. So there was pretty normal life. Wow. Yeah. And did people think it was over at that stage? They thought they yeah. got away with it. <laughs> yeah, but the virus, of course, was still still present here. Yeah. And then cases started increasing, what, about August, August time? It, uh, it was increasing uh, all the time, I would say. But uh, since it's exponential, it, uh, it looks like it's very slow in the beginning. Yes. So uh, if I check the data, I think the, the first problem problem started somewhere let me see yeah in the, in the in the august yeah yes yes it, it seems uh, to be visible to, to, to the people and how did the government respond this time to Pavel? Huh, uh, i would say that government was sleeping uh, through the summer so they were not prepared for the testing and tracing system it collapsed quite soon after this so the government was responding very slowly uh, to the situation and uh, let's say there were no preparation during the summer Everyone was happy. Uh, the uh, coronavirus is, is away, so we were just happy. So it was a good, good, good summer in the Czech Republic. Eating, eating yeah. sausage and chips, and drinking beer outside, and having a good time. Exactly. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you have world famous beer, don't you? So. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think the original Budweiser that Americans drink was actually a Czech, I think. Yeah, yeah, the name comes from uh, from Czech, Czech city. Yeah. It's actually a Czech ripoff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but but back to serious things. Now, the thing that I can't understand here is why the government reacted so well in March. Uh, you have to ask the government. I don't and, know. And yet, completely ignored the problem in September. This seems it's the same government. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same government, and they got the warning uh, from the experts. And they got some recommendation to increase the testing and tracing and do this and this, but they just didn't read it. Nobody listened to them. So I don't know. It's so strange. They did such a good job. And, and basically in, in, in March, it was almost like Australia or New Zealand where the epidemic was completely cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then in September, they just seemed to 
go the other the opposite way we can we can just speculate about this of course there were some elections and uh, so maybe this yeah. is also a political thing not only the epi epidemiological point of view so yeah. we have to ask uh, uh, the history can later on maybe and so on well if the prime minister wants to come on i'll uh, i'll talk to him <laughs> <laughs> now october um j j just tell us what the situation is like there now pavel on this uh, i mean what, what's the level of restrictions now in october uh, uh the restriction it very quickly came to let's say the partial lockdown so the the schools are closed i mean the primary and high schools and uh, like this just the nursery schools are uh, are open and all non-essential shops are closed and non-essential services and we have the partial lockdown uh, lockdown uh, you can name it like this so uh, it's uh, supposed that you go to work for food pharmacy visit someone and so on, uh, so on and then stay home but well, it's a full then... lockdown situation really now isn't it yeah well, but... when was that reimposed Pavel roughly uh, sorry when was that reimposed the lockdown was it early it's October actually, it's not actually it's not so people still can gather outside uh, and right. there is no control ah so it's not enforced right okay so <laughs> fun yeah, yeah. Now, how is the population reacting? Do ever, does everyone wear masks in public places, in shops and things like that? Yeah, the masks are mandatory, but you can you can see a lot of people which are wearing uh, wearing the masks not properly. Yeah, and some people are not willing to wear masks. So and the social part, distancing not what it should be, or is that good? Uh, it depends. Uh, for example, there was a, a market in Prague, and you see uh, plenty of people there just just shopping outside and not really taking the care about the distances right and is there any facilities for hand hygiene in public places uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, please can you is there any, is anywhere to wash your hands or hand sanitizers when you go into shops yeah in the shops it, it's mandatory but uh, uh, what i see that usually uh, uh, it's empty or not working so but it, it should be there now, I have seen some demonstrations in Czech Republic on the news. What was that about? Yeah, the demonstration was basically uh, basically against and was a protest at the government restrictions. So people are angry to wear the masks, to be locked and, and so on. The restaurants are closed. So a lot of people from uh, which uh, which leads the restaurants uh, are angry because it, it stopped uh, their business. Right. And, yeah. Again, it's almost like two countries. So in, in, in March, there was the mandated lockdown and everyone complied. That's exact. In yes. September, October, uh, the government has th there's officially a, there's officially a lockdown, but it's not enforced and people aren't complying with it. So there seems to be a lot of what we might call COVID fatigue. The government and the people are just sick of this and have gone back to normal almost. Yeah. In the first wave, uh, the people were just frightened and they agree with all, all the restrictions. Uh -huh. And now the people are annoyed. Got it. And um, without we, we don't want particular numbers, but we know that there's a massive increase in the Czech Republic. I mean, I think I think the Czech Republic is now leading Europe for, for increasing cases, isn't it? Uh, yeah, today it was uh, 15 K, uh, 15 uh, of the 15,000. Yeah, yeah, 15, yeah. What are the hospital facilities like in Czech Republic? Can they cope with the proportion of people that are going to get sick? So far, they are coping with the situation. But when you watch the news, uh, you see uh, the number of hospitals, which are, of course, limiting the normal service. Yes. Uh, and the doctors uh, are very tired. A lot of doctors is actually sick as well. So there is yes. a problem with, with the personnel. So the hospitals are quickly, quickly uh, getting in the into serious troubles. So the routine surgery, the cancer treatments, all those things have been suspended. Yes, yes. Which, of course, has got massive problems of its own, hasn't it? That's it. So uh, the, the Republic is calling the doctors from abroad, uh, from European Union and yeah. NATO. And of course, the ventilators are, are coming here from the other countries as a help. Yes. The increase, it's, it's clearly exponential. <clears throat> Yeah, you so can it, 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 I think I think the military are helping as well at the moment, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They built one one field hospital actually, and the second second field hospital is planned to be built in Brno in second city. So yeah. extra hospital facilities are being constructed as we speak. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. So clearly, the government is anticipating a very very difficult winter. 
Exactly, exactly. But uh, the question if, uh, is, uh, I think that they just reacted uh, too late. Yes, yes. D d does the Czech Republic have uh, good relationships with the German places over the border? Do mm -hmm. patients from Czech Republic go to Germany for treatment? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The German is going to help and to take some patients, but I think the German is also getting into troubles it is. slower yeah. than us, but yeah. there is also a trend. So generally the relations between the, the Czech Republic and Germany over the border are good relations? Yeah, I would say yes, very good. You know, excuse my extreme ignorance here, Pavel, I can't remember, is Czech Republic in the European Union? <laughs> no, no, no problem, don't worry. I mean, <laughs> no, we, are, we are going to be famous now, I think. Uh, so it's in the European Union now. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> just, just realised I didn't know that. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And same with Poland. Quite good relationships with Poland. Yeah, but I watch the TV now uh, today, and I saw that in Poland. It's also there is some twist, and the situation is going quickly very bad. Yes, yes. So, so all that central area of Europe is going to have a difficult few months, I think, isn't yeah. it? It's. Uh, yeah. How's your health been personally, Pavel? Have you stayed well? Uh, I'm fine personally, but my wife had uh, coronavirus, fortunately, with very mild symptoms. And also we are uh, taking a vitamin D, like 4,000 units per day, vitamin uh -huh. C and some zinc daily. So yes. it's kind of stuff. So maybe it helped. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what, uh, what, what zinc tablets are you taking? Is it 30 milligrams? Uh, 25 milligrams. 25 zinc milligrams, yeah. It's organic version. Is the importance of vitamin D well known in the Czech Republic? Huh. Is everyone doing this or is it just because you're particularly well informed? Uh, I think no. There is, uh, in general, there is a deficiency of vitamin D in the population. Yes. There were some studies about this. And just recently, I think a week ago, there was uh, some papers um, uh, in, the, in the news that the vitamin D is, is very important. So it was just, let's say, one, two weeks ago. And of course, uh, the next day, uh, the pharmacy shops uh, were out of the vitamin D. Sure. So I, think, uh, I think the people doesn't think about about uh, the vitamins and and uh, the vitamins, the vitamin D, especially vitamin D. But it sounds that message is getting through now. Yeah, yeah. But I'm afraid uh, you probably need to take the vitamin D regularly for some time to increase the levels. So Correct. A week ago, it doesn't help. So much. Well, at this time of year, though, if, as long as you've been outside in the summer sunshine, yeah, the levels probably aren't too bad. The, the levels go down as winter progresses normally. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But outside today is sunny, but uh, uh, it's exceptional, let's say. Yeah, but you're not getting any. You're not getting your shirt off and getting in the garden. Yeah, it's quite cold now. Yeah. What are winters like in Czech? Are they are they quite cold winters? It was 20 years ago. <laughs> it was uh, it was like minus 10. Yeah, uh, I would say it's uh, it can, the temperature is uh, from zero to minus minus 10. Yeah, it, it goes below to zero regularly during uh, the night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. So, and and, and um, your English is clearly very good, Pavel. What, what, what is the uh, is your first language? Again, my ignorance. Sorry, I, it's so extreme. What, no. what is your first language? Uh, Czech. <laughs> right, okay. And is that similar to German or Polish or? Uh, not at all. It's completely different from German. You can catch some words from from Polish. It's uh, let's say it's close to Russia. Maybe you can a little bit okay. catch some words, uh, but it's kind of unique. And uh, and most of people who are learning Czech say that it's very uh, very difficult. Yeah. So there's not many foreigners speak Czech? Uh, personally, I have a friend uh, in UK and uh, he speaks Czech quite well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he had a wife here, so he ran the six years uh, and ah. was quite fluent in Czech. Well, so. that's, if you marry from, from the country, that's a bit different. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. we are so small, so it, it doesn't make sense to, to learn Czech uh, as a foreigner. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'm just amazed. You know, I thought you know you think you know Europe quite well, and I've just realised as a country I'm almost completely ignorant of it. it must must appear very, <laughs> very impolite. I don't know basic things, right? But it's good that you've enlightened us, so that's good. Yeah. So, so what is the eastern borders? The what what country do you, if you start walking east, what country do you come to? 
to uh, if if I go to east, I go to Slovakia. Then yeah. there is Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Then some the Russia republics and so on. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay, so um, th that that's fascinating talk. Thank you, and I believe you're going to show us a, a PowerPoint as well, which is going to give a bit more information, a bit more detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to do this because it's really interesting. What is the what sure, is the twist, sure. twist in the situation? Yeah. So um, I always, in, I think you and me both intend these things to be quite short. Then it gets so interesting that we end up giving more <laughs> more information. So <laughs> if anyone stayed for the whole talk, that would be uh, that that would be great. So thank you for that introduction, Pavel. And uh, and uh, we're, we're now going to show us this um, this PowerPoint where we're going to get a bit of detail about what's going on in the Czech Republic. Probably, yeah, probably you cut some some something from from this. Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm going to put the whole thing on, and people can. Now, probably most people will switch off now, but some people will want the extra detail. Okay, as you like. The reason it's particularly interesting is is it's um it's a country that's not talked about very often, but it, it yeah, is. We are very, small. Sorry. We are small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's a you know, very very important area. But it's it represents Europe as well. I mean, it's a very European country, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, you've got a very European culture. Uh, culture. You've got um European. Uh, your European sort of food uh, diet. Exactly. Um, are most people Catholic or? Uh, most people are atheist or they just believe in uh, in some, uh, I don't know how to say, um, like like the homeopathy and the kind of uh, stuff like this. Uh, oh, right. So there's, there's a few um, sort of alternative sport. beliefs. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Well, but, as, a, as, as scientists, I don't think we need to talk about homeopathy anymore. I think that debate is finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's great, Pavel. Th thanks. And we look forward to your PowerPoint now, so we appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting to our yeah, channel. Thank you.